And then I heard some principled chiropractors and got the philosophy. And the more I learned about the philosophy of chiropractic, the more it hit home. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. Thank you for tuning into the Dr. Haley Show podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Haley. Today's guest is Dr. Bill Ormston. He goes by Dr. O. Dr. O is a chiropractor, but not just any kind of chiropractor. In fact, trust me, you don't want to go to Dr. O for a chiropractic adjustment, unless you're an animal. All of Dr. O's patients are animals. Dr. O teaches those with licenses to practice veterinary medicine or chiropractic how to adjust animals. He's author of the book, Yes, It's Really a Thing, an informative guide to animal chiropractic. Enjoy the show. So I heard you go by Dr. What you o. need to know about me is that I'm a principled veterinarian. A principled veterinarian. I like that. That's there great. You go. So I'm, and, and you're saying that you're saying that because you know I'm a chiropractor. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Dr. O, let's back up before we get to that though, because Okay. That's not what you started out as. Did you go into practice saying, I want to help animals or did you start? No. So I I graduated. I, you know, I was going to be a veterinarian five years old. My dog got hurt, blah, blah, blah. I started, you know, I'm going to be a veterinarian. That's what I'm going to be. Only thing I was ever going to be, you know, took all the science in high school, went to undergrad, didn't do so well found out that partying and high grades don't go well together and went and worked for a couple years on farms and like, this isn't for me. Reapplied to vet school, got in and man, I thought I was it. Well, for sure. And, and then I had the honor of having a son that was autistic with seizure disorder. Now, when, when I hear that, I'm, you know, I don't even know what causes it. You know, someone might say gut, somebody might say nervous system. Uh, what'd you find out and what'd you do about it? Well, I found out that he, well, he died. Oh. Um, he was 37 years old when he died. Oh my goodness. He lived an awesome 37 years old and taught me a ton. But what he taught me was that there was 17 chiropractors and myself that were responsible for his death. Now we'll get there. (laughs) Okay. All right. Now this is, this is not what I was set ready for. (laughs) This is going to be an episode. My goodness. So what happened was, You know, I'm cruising along using drugs, vaccines, just doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a veterinarian, you know, or an MD, traditionally trained. I've never heard of the Flexner Report. I don't know who Mr. Fishbein is. You know, I've heard of Rockefeller and Carnegie, but don't really know how much of a negative influence they've had on my education and my kid's health. But thankfully, People are nosy. And when they find out you have a problem in your life, they are willing to help. You should try this. You need to do this. Hey, have you heard of this? You know. And, and are they helping with actual knowledge? Because a lot of people want to help and they just make stuff up. Yeah, that's so with my Western trained brain, I have to go figure out if it's feasible or not. Right. So try homeopathy. So I buy a bunch of books on homeopathy and I read them and I get to the chapter on seizures and it says seizures are a serious condition. You should consult a naturopath in your area. And I'm like, 
if I knew a naturopath, I wouldn't have bought the book. But anyway, um, so I end up, I have a degree in veterinary homeopathy. Um, and Riley's seizures were helped, but not taken care of by homeopathy. So then somebody said, oh, you need to go to a chiropractor. All right. So I started calling some chiropractors, but I didn't know the right questions to ask. And you're a chiropractor. So Dr. Michael, I have a son. He's about two and a half years old now. Um, can you cure his seizures? Cure is a pretty strong word. Right. And, but that was my question because I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. No, I can, I could actually answer uh, that question though. <laughs> and and uh, as a chiropractor, what I could, what, what I'd probably say is, you know, as a chiropractor, I'm going to check his spine. And if I find areas of tension and interference, I'll release it to the best of my ability. What God mm -hmm. does with that is between, you know, you and him. And then other things we can do is we can look at nutrition and make the best improvements we can. We can, you know, from an exercise perspective, there's, well, exercise isn't only strength training, but it's also flexibility, which is great for the nervous system. And there's endurance. And we want to do everything we can in that area and make sure he's getting the right rest. You know, when it comes to nutrition, there's some things we know about seizures. Some of them are actually controlled when you're in a state of ketosis. We can you know, create a diet log and we could look at these things and see if he does better with certain foods and emphasize those in his diet. We can make these changes and hope that God uses them and cures your son. Your son can cure, you know, by the life in him, by God. All we can do is give that everything, you know, that we know to the best of our ability, that's to his benefit and, and hope that you know, that hope it works. There's those principles speaking again, those 33 principles. And I unfortunately didn't contact any chiropractors that understood the principles. And my answer was no. When I called, they were, I was told no. And so I was cruising along. We're still looking. I went to a vet meeting and they was a little bit on chiropractic. And, and so I went and listened and thought, you know, I've got a couple patients that might benefit from that. And maybe I could look into this a little bit more. And so I added chiropractic as a tool to my toolbox. And I was getting pretty good results. I didn't know why, but it was just a tool because that's the way I learned it. And then I heard some principled chiropractors and got the philosophy. And the more I learned about the philosophy of chiropractic, the more it hit home. So I was, uh, this like two years ago, but I was 47, <laughs> more than a couple years ago. I weighed about 300 pounds. I had just gone through a divorce and had three teenage kids at home. Mm. Woke up one morning and I have a shooting pain down my left arm. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm having a heart attack, right? I know it. You know, you can surmise that, right? So I got the kids to school, called a couple of clients, told them I'd probably be late and drove myself to my cardiologist. Now you have to understand that my cardiologist has a dog named Oscar and every once in a while, Oscar would be dragging a leg. And Dr. B would call me up and say, Hey, Oscar's got an issue. Can I bring him out? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. It was night. It was Sunday. It was whenever. All right. So I adjust Oscar. So I'm, thinking I'm having no problems. I'm going into Dr. B's office. I'm walking in saying, Hey, Dr. B think I'm having a heart attack. Can you fix me? Anyway, on the way there though, I have to go by my chiropractor and I thought, you know, <clears throat> low back, I don't want to be in bed for three days with a sore back. Right? So I'm going to stop and get adjusted. So I walk in the door and Dr. Stowell says, hey, uh, you're in luck. I got an opening. Lay down. So I laid down. He says, anything up? I said, oh, same old, same old. He says, yeah, sorry about that divorce thing. That's got to be stressful. And I said, yeah, it is. And anyway, he adjusted me. He said, roll over. He said, you got a first rib out. This might hurt. 
dusted my first rib. I said, okay, get up. And I got up and I was like, no, the heart attack went away. Yeah, it did. The shooting pain down my left arm. And he goes, are you all right? Cause I'm just like amazed, you know? And, and he says, <laughs> and I told him, he said, he said, sit down. He said, sit down. And uh, so I said, okay. He got the blood pressure cuffs out and he checked my blood pressure. He says, it's a little high, uh, but even he said, I want you to sit there for 20 minutes. And I'm like, why? I feel great. I'm going to go to work. He said, just sit there for 20 minutes. You were on your way to the cardiologist, right? Well, yeah, I was because I told him. He said, so sit there for 20 minutes. What, what do you got to lose? Well, now when I look back at all this, I sat there for 20 minutes because if I was having a heart attack, that was causing my rib to be subluxated, which would be called a visceral somatic response, my rib would have gone back out. Like almost immediately. It would not have stayed in. So in 20 minutes, when he came back and checked my rib, and it was still where it belonged, it was not subluxated, it was functioning properly. We kind of ruled that out probably. He took my blood pressure, it had gone down 10 points and was still even. He said, all right. But then he said, don't do that to me again. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, and so I've asked a lot of chiropractors this question. If I walked in to your office, you don't know me. And I said, doc, you're the closest place. First office I came to, I, I think I'm having a heart attack. Based on your I need symptoms, I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, no, and it's and and it, probably not what you think. The first thing I'm going to do is look at the pain and say, "Okay, let's bend your head that way a little bit yep. towards that side." And what's happening to it? Is the pain changing? Let's bend it this way. In fact, I might even lift up a little bit. Is anything changing? Now, if it's not changing, I'm going to be concerned. Yep. Yeah, but if it's changing, I'm thinking biomechanical you know, and proceed from there. So, yep. you know, that's how I'm going to look at it because how do you know if it's a heart attack or, uh, you know, we call it a pinched nerve. We know it's not actually a pinched nerve, but right. tension on a nerve, irritated nerve, you know, space occupying lesion, which could be inflammation. Right. So anyway, so now I've looked at the odds. Okay. So what are my odds of dying if I'm having a heart attack, what are my odds of dying during a chiropractic adjustment? You know, as many adjustments that happen every day in this world, I would imagine they're pretty darn low. Somewhere between one in a million and one in four million. Okay, so those are my odds. What are my odds of dying during a stress test? Wow, I've never really considered that other than the fact that I thought a stress test, you're really pushing things to the limits. I wonder how safe that is. So I can't wait to know the answer. One in 2,500. Wow. So if I survive the stress test, what are my chances of surviving the angiocat? Hmm. My odds of dying during angiocat are one in a thousand. Wow. And then if I survive those two things, they're going to put me on. So now it'd be almost 20 years of statin drugs. And the side effects of statin drugs, the chances of death are negligible from statin drugs. And that ends up, it's like 0.1%, which is one in 10,000, which is still a whole lot more likely of me not being here to talk to you today than from getting my adjustment. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you brought up something early on and I didn't explore it. Uh, what can you tell us about the Flexner report and, you know, Carnegie's <laughs> and, and why that's important for the listening audience? Because they probably have no idea why that is significant. Well, I know. And I stumbled across it. Um, the more I look into it, in fact, I have a new book coming out. The new book is It's a Better Thing, uh, A Chiropractic Lifestyle for Your Dog. And it talks about 
all the things that you talked about for my son. It talks about the chiropractic adjustment. It talks about diet and it talks about exercise, a chiropractic lifestyle for your dog, which remember I, before we go to the flexion report, remember I told you that there were 17 chiropractors that I say are responsible for my son's death. They're the 17 chiropractors in the communities that I lived in before I was 39 years old, which is when I got my first adjustment and when he got his first adjustment. And those 17 chiropractors, chiropractic was not even in my vocabulary. Mm. I don't think that everybody has to have a chiropractic adjustment because I truly believe just like a vaccine, it should be a choice. It should be an educated choice. Absolutely. That, that the owner or guardian of every spine in the world should be able to make. Yeah. Do I want vaccines? Or do I want a chiropractic adjustment? Which one is going to increase my immune system to the point that I am going to have a healthy, happy dog, child, or me? Okay. And that's where the Flexner report screwed up. So what happened was back in 1910, these two guys, most of your listeners have probably heard of them. Rockefeller and Carnegie and, and they were drilling oil and doing all kinds of stuff. And they're, they were philanthropists. They gave money. Okay. And they had all these scientists in a building trying to come up with ways so that they could give more money. But in order to give more money, they needed to make more money. And so what these scientists were attempting to do was come up with ways to use the byproducts from the oil industry. And they came up with all these synthetic vitamins and synthetic drugs and stuff that we should use. But most of the doctors weren't interested because there was no standardization in medicine. We had people that were using homeopathy. We had people that were using magnetic therapies. We had people that were doing adjusting. We had people that were adjusting to improve nerve flow. We had people that were adjusting to improve blood flow. Those are the osteopath. And then we had the doctors that were using some drugs that they had, you know, not a lot of drugs at that time, but some drugs. And so they decided, Carnegie and Rockefeller, they were going to send somebody to all the med schools. 150 med schools, some chiropractic schools, some osteopathic schools, 28 vet schools. They were going to send somebody there. So they talked to these three brothers. They're the Flexner brothers. Now, of the three brothers, one's a doctor, one's a pharmacist, and the other one flunked out of pre-grad school. I didn't know okay. that. Yeah. Those are the three brothers. Which one do you think they hired to go visit all these schools? Well, I would think the one with the biggest name recognition, the biggest status, the, the highest level of education. That, that would be nice, but they chose the guy that flunked. <laughs> you, you, you know, they say that the, uh, what is it, the C students... The B students work for the C students and the A students teach. <laughs> so maybe there's some of that principle being worked in that. You enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera, specifically drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, 
tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. So anyway, this they, this guy goes to all these schools, and um, of the 28 vet schools, 26 of them closed. So we went from 28 vet schools to two. Now we've built back up, but but there were they all do standardized medicine. 150 medical schools, 48% of them closed. And then there was the chiropractic schools refused to do anything. And then the osteopaths. All right. Now, of the 48% that are the 52% of the med schools that stayed open, so about 70 of them, they all had grades. And anybody that had a C or below, like for instance, the New York School of Homeopathic Medicine got like a D. And they were allowed access to some free grant money on a couple of stipulations. One, they had to teach um, this new course. Uh, it was called Pharmacology. Yeah. And the New York School of Homeopathic Medicine had to change their name, and I'm sure you've heard of them, the New York School of Medicine. Yeah, you, you know, it, as you're saying this, you get one of those eerie kind of feelings. And you understand <laughs> all the more because when you control the education, and we're having instances of that right now where different organizations are trying to control our children's education. We want to program yep. them a certain way. And yep. that's a scary thing because if you can control the people and brainwash them into believing a certain yep. set of ideas, ideals, and, and you form them, you can get them buying your products. You can have them, you know, like sheep to the slaughter. Well, yeah, like sheep to the slaughter. Not only that, but anything else is misinformation. Yeah, the misinformation is sold as anything outside of this is misinformation. Correct. So the Flexner Report comes out, and it took Congress like 27 years to do anything with it. But in 1937, Congress agreed to have the medical boards, the medical board testing, and anybody that had an A or B on the Flexner Report, students were eligible for the national boards. Well, of course, the chiropractic students were not. So, you know, we're, you're not real doctors. You're just a chiropractor. Um, <laughs> believe me, I don't. I've never heard that I before. <laughs> and then at the same time, the osteopaths had disagreed with that. Now, in 1939, the College of Osteopathy decided they were tired of being quacks. So therefore, they were going to add pharmacology to their curriculum. Wow. And now they can take the national board. Wow. Chiropractors are the only profession that hasn't caved in yet, even though there's, you and I both know, we have that internal fighting in chiropractic is huge. And what is a chiropractic adjustment? And it goes back to when I say I'm a principled veterinarian. I get it. I practice according to the 33 principles of chiropractic. The body heals above, down, inside out. You know, there are limitations of matter that may be due to nutrition and exercise and everything else. The body has the ability to heal itself if we just stay out of its way. Yeah. Yeah. And you and me, you know, you said you unloaded this morning. You were working and you were sweating. Okay, and now we're sitting here. You know, I was had a chainsaw running this morning. Oh, I love it. So both of those things have helped us. Now, if we hadn't done that, if we had come right to work and sat in our chair behind our screens, you know, how could our body truly heal from above, down, inside out? Dr. O, how old are you now? I am 64. All right, 64 years old. Before jumping on this podcast, you're out working with a chainsaw. Correct. 
You know, a lot of people think that at a certain age, you're just not going to be doing those things. And for me, I couldn't fathom not doing those things well into my 80s, maybe 90s. Who knows? Maybe, yeah. maybe in my 90s, I'll settle down and maybe put the dangerous tools, you know, back in the shed and <laughs> not take them out anymore. I don't know if I'll be working with a chainsaw at 90, but I think it's very cool that we're jumping on this podcast and we both have these hard work experiences. And when we're done, we're probably going to go back to them because that's what we do. And, you know, we're probably going to participate in sports and have fun in competition and do these things. I'm not in my 60s yet. I'm 57. But we should be very capable if we have, you know, the physical, we're born with all of our parts and, and we have everything we need, we should be very, very capable well into our years. We go, people ask all the time, how often should my dog get adjusted? As often as it gets subluxated. Um, we know that within um, 40 seconds of a subluxation, we start to decrease nerve transmission by up to 40 to 50%. Now, most of your listeners probably know what a subluxation is and this isn't going to be a problem with the speaker so nobody reach for your volume but when the body is subluxated it's like this <laughs> and you can't understand you can't understand and so you go to the cryo factor and they go boom and now we can communicate i like that analogy for those that didn't here, uh, you weren't supposed to. <laughs> Dr. O was, what I was muffling his voice that... intentionally and unable to fully express what he wanted to say because his hand was over his mouth. And that would be just like a stress attention on a nerve diminishing its nerve flow to whatever that was whether it's your bowels or some people might experience pain. I, I have a neck pain. Okay, the nerve is interfering with the normal flow and you're experiencing it as pain. Other people might experience poor digestion or irritability or weakness or fatigue or anything, wherever that nerve goes to, kidney function decrease, detoxification, liver function decrease. Whatever that nerve goes to would be expressed at less than its optimal 100%, whatever that is for that particular person, their organs, their expression of life. Can you imagine if you're, you have the ability of living at 100%, but you were only at 60 because of decreased nerve function? Or do you, maybe yeah, you're at 80, decreased. but you could be at 100. Maybe you're at 95. Wouldn't you like to be at 100 if you could be? Yeah. Yeah. You bet. And people think that, oh, I go to the chiropractor when my back hurts. Well, you know, 95% of your nervous system does things other than pain. And so if your back hurts, that means 95% of your nervous system isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. You know, I, Which I, includes I have a favorite testimonial, and I've told it before on this podcast, but I'm going to share it again because I think now's the time, and it does drive this point home because I think of my patient, Charlie, and we're going back a good 30 years or so. In fact, I was relatively new in practice at the time, and Charlie came in with brand new neck pain radiating down his arm and low back pain radiating down his leg. And that was his real concern. It was the back pain because he mowed lawns for a living and he couldn't work because of the back pain. And I remember taking an x-ray and seeing this crooked bone in his back. And when I say crooked, you know, a, a bone could be out of position with respect to its range of motion or it could be just out and crooked forever and you could tell this one was just crooked and has been there a long time it wasn't that it wasn't bending one way or the other it was out and i was determined being a young chiropractor i wanted to fix it in one shot 
<laughs> and I didn't give him many instructions. I was a new chiropractor. My bedside manner probably wasn't the best, but I put him in one of those side positions. People think of it being like a pretzel. They often describe it as a pretzel position. I put my pisiform, this bone right here in my hand on his lumbar vertebrae, and I pushed it back into position the best I could all at once. And it probably sounded like sitting on a bag of potato chips, not, not the thin ones, the real thick kinds, maybe like Doritos. <laughs> it made a lot of noise. And I didn't tell Charlie what was going to happen. I was new, poor bedside manner. And Charlie was a black man. And if you've ever seen Caddyshack, Rodney Dangerfield had this big yacht and he was just flying across the water. And there was a black man fishing in his boat and he looked and he saw the yacht coming. He looked back fishing, not realizing what he saw. He looked again at the yacht. Now his eyes were about as big as donuts. That was exactly what I saw in Charlie. They looked identical. I would think that he was the guy on the boat in Caddyshack. <laughs> And it was kind of like, what, what just happened? What did you just do? And at the time, I, you know, I did what I knew I was supposed to do and say, don't worry, Charlie, that's exactly what I knew was going to happen. <laughs> of course, I said, I'll be right back. And I left the room and got on my hands and knees said, oh, Lord Jesus, God, what happened? Help me, you know, <laughs> be with Charlie. Uh, but Charlie came back the next day because I, I said, Charlie, I want to see you tomorrow. And... He came back. He said, Dr. Haley, something you did. I was like, okay, something I did. I wonder what, what he's going to say. First thing he said is, I don't have any more pain in my neck going down my arm. I don't have any more pain in my back going down my leg. Something you did. I said, what do you mean? And he kind of got quiet and said, well, I can have sex again. That was the first thing he said. I said, how long have you had this problem? He said, for 10 years. But he still, you know, persisted, something you did. All right, what else is going on? Well, I don't have constipation anymore. And <laughs> when did that start? Ten years ago. I said, Charlie, when I adjusted you, you know, your eyes just bug-eyed and big, and, you know, you had almost this look of fear. I said, what was that? He said, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> So after 10 years, it's like everything was being released in his bowels because somehow restoring the function on that particular segment took the pressure off the nerve and his bowel function that he had no idea was related to the nerve. So that bone was not functioning. That joint wasn't functioning right. It was irritating the nerve, making him unable to perform as a man and having constipation the pain showed up finally 10 years later when he was doing yard work you don't have to have yep. pain to have a vertebral subluxation complex short word subluxation yep so there's this these five cardinal signs of inflammation that we that all of us doctors learned and some people even learned you know in their physiology classes there's these five guys they're, they're roman the, the the pictures we see is there's these five roman guys in togas and they're holding up the, the the column right and they all have latin names but there's they're they're sharp all right there's five of them there's swelling there's heat we're gonna skip to a there's redness and there's pain and the a is loss of function and it's like wait a minute how that guy doesn't fit in there and so I could never remember those five guys until I learned ardor, which roughly translates to hard spot, which means it doesn't move. Okay. So ardor, loss of function. And everybody knows, and maybe it's your church, maybe it's at the community, maybe it's down at the gas station. But you know, when you go down to the to your local spot, right? There's five guys there, or there's five ladies there. And, and when you see them, they're all there, all right? And one might leave for a little bit, but you know they're coming back, 
And that's what happens with these cardinal signs of inflammation, these five guides, right? There's swelling, there's heat, there's ardor, there's redness and pain, okay? And usually the guy in the middle doesn't leave. Ardor, that loss of function, because there's only one way that we can get him to leave. You know, you can go get a massage and the swelling will go away and the heat will leave and the redness might get better for a while and the pain will go away, but you haven't restored function. You, you can take some Tylenol and the swelling and heat, redness and pain will go away, but it hasn't done anything to Ardor because he's the boss, all right? And there's only one person in your community that can get rid of our door and tell him to get out of here. And it may be a day that he stays away the first time and it may be a week, but you know, as soon as our door comes back, you need to go see your chiropractor again and get him kicked out of the house. Because if our door has gone, you don't have sharp. You can't have sharp without the valve. So swelling, heat, redness, and pain may be short-lived when Ardor's not there. But man, if he's there, you got to go to the chiropractor. So when people say, how often do I need to go to the chiropractor? As soon as loss of function shows up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, look to the left. Whoops. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> it's always been that way. <laughs> no, Dad. <laughs> no. You should be able to look to the right, look to the left. It should be. And, and one of the things that we see in our practice that people have a thing to, you go, what do you mean? We don't have emergencies in our veterinary practice. Adjusted animals make better choices. Hmm. Like if a horse is going to run through a fence, the horse knows that if he runs through the fence, it's going to get hurt. I mean, but there's something on the inside of the fence with him that to him seems to be more of a danger than running through the fence. So basically his sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous systems or his flight and rest aren't in balance. And so when they're not in balance, we don't make good decisions. We make bad decisions. I'm Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast as a thank you for listening. Here's a coupon code you can use at HaleyNutrition.com during the month of August 2024. Get 20 bucks off your entire purchase of $150 or more. Many people order two bottles of aloe vera at a time. Consider upgrading to four bottles or adding Aya Greens vegetable and fruit powder. Most people don't get enough plant nutrients. Adding a scoop of greens to your daily routine is a great way to meet that need. And when you upgrade to four bottles of aloe vera, they ship a lot better, especially during the summertime. They'll still melt quite a bit in the mail for three days, but will arrive much colder than two bottles. Or use the coupon to try some of our other products. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the code Dr. Haley. That's D-R-H-A-L-E-Y, one word, no spaces, for 20 bucks off your order of 150 or more now through the end of August 2024. If you're enjoying this podcast, please give it a thumbs up or leave a review, depending on which platform you're on. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of the show. You know, there's, try not to get too political. But I do know that there is an independent candidate out there that if you would like to make a donation to him, he prefers it to be $33, $33.33 or $330.33 because then he knows you're a chiropractor and you understand the principles. And he has a chiropractor that travels with him. Oh, cool. Yeah. And he is not one of the candidates that was on the main debate the other day. Yep, yep, no, and I have no problem saying he's talking about Robert Kennedy Jr. <laughs> yes, yes. Did you know that if you write a check for thirty three thirty three, um, that like it's 
he knows that you're a kind That's really interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. You, you know, when it comes to uh, politics, just so you know, there's no one out there that could offend me, whether they have a different favorite candidate or whatever the case is, because the reality is that's what makes our country so wonderful. It is. And even though the Flexner Report tried to hide that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but the neat thing about it is we kind of keep things in check and sometimes the pendulum swings yeah. too far one way and, you know, it forces it to swing back the other way. And, and yep. it, it's a beautiful yeah, and thing. And it's chiropractic is when you look back at the people that went before us, all the chiropractors that went to jail, um, one of my mentors, Dr. Sharon Willoughby, had both a DVM and a DC. She spent eight years in college, in postgraduate college. Um, she got her vet degree, and then she went to Palmer Davenport and got a chiropractic degree. She actually taught anatomy uh, at Palmer Davenport for a while. Um, and she was arrested in Illinois for practicing veterinary medicine, um, for practicing chiropractic, sorry, without a DC license because she was just a veterinarian in Illinois. She was arrested in Iowa for practicing veterinary medicine because she was just a DC. Wow. And so she was the one that started basically the modern day animal chiropractic, the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association and said, Hey, neither profession knows animal chiropractic, but both of them should understand it and, and can be trained with a little extra. And, and that's one of the things we do here at ACEs, All Creatures, Every Spine, and Animal Chiropractic Education Source, is we educate veterinarians and chiropractors how to adjust animals because we feel every animal needs to be adjusted. Um, we've done some taste tests. 74% of consumers prefer chiropractically adjusted chickens. <laughs> you know, I the I was one of the things I wanted to know are what are some of the animals you adjusted and what's the most outrageous animal you ever adjusted? Um and then when you said chicken, I couldn't imagine adjusting a bird. I never really thought about it. Now I can't imagine it. Now I am imagining it right now for the first time. <laughs> a spine, they don't have seven cervical vertebrae. Each bird has a different number of cervical vertebra. Um, all mammals have seven. So it's, you know, um, but yeah, chickens have 14 um, and we adjust them. Uh, and we know that our chickens gain weight faster when we adjust them. So they're more vigorous. So how's that correlate to human chiropractic? Well, you know, when we do our, we adjust our, our uh, Dale chicks and we adjust them every two weeks. And they have a goal and their, their purpose is to provide meat for us. Um, I'm allergic to store-bought chickens, but I can eat our own chiropractically adjusted chickens. Wow. They make it to uh, market weight at six and a half pounds in 92 days. And if we don't adjust them, we did that once, uh, it takes them 114 days. Wow. So Something different about their energy, strength, calmness whatever it is and probably not yeah. in fear probably parasympathetic no, relax chilling feeling good and even we have chickens at the house that are our egg chickens and they will ask for a chiropractic adjustment that's awesome that's a that's incredible they will, they will come and stand in front of you and plop down and somebody once said well they just want to be picked up and petted well if you pick up and pet them and put them back down. Yeah, <laughs> they want some more, huh? But if you pick them up and adjust them, give them a good chiropractic adjustment that they need, check their spine, adjust it, put it down, and then they go off and do their thing. And it's amazing. Um, the chiropractic adjusted body has the ability to adapt to its environment and adapt to changes in a way that the unadjusted body cannot do. So when we see things like 
I mean, I'm sure some of your listeners are sitting in traffic right now and getting irritated because, oh, the traffic, or somebody pulled in front of them, or, rah, rah. you know what? Stop by the chiropractor. Get adjusted because that chiropractically adjusted spine is going to help you respond in a way more appropriate that's going to be beneficial to you. Yeah. Maybe there's a reason. You know, talked about my divorce. I lived in a subdivision in a suburb of North Dallas. Um, my current wife, Dr. Amy, is an amazing person. She's a, a business, got a strong sense of business on her head, and we're doing amazing things. Most of it's her fault. Um, we live on a 192-acre ranch, and I can see 26 miles in one direction. Wow. How cool. So that's my silver lining behind the divorce. Because, you know, when I got, just like everybody, when you get divorced, it's like, oh, my God, it's terrible. I'm not putting anything on it. But there's a reason for everything that happens in your life, you know. And if you're able to react to it in an appropriate manner, you can find that silver lining. It, it's, it's huge, you know. Dr. O, a uh, little bit of a trick question, but not really, because you actually already answered this indirectly. You were telling me that birds have, I think you said four bones in the neck. 14. 14. 14 I was going to say. Okay. Uh, now, giraffes have really long necks. They have seven, and giraffes are the only, only. I am an upper cervical guy, a hole in one guy. I know there's 10 reasons you adjust the atlas. You adjust the atlas first. It's a lot less work if you adjust the atlas first. A lot of other stuff goes away. We increase the immune system. Biomechanically, things happen. Um, it's amazing. The giraffe atlas has no wings. Every animal, I have 68 atlases. I have a bone room. Uh, just around the corner here, we have 68 spines in there. Wow. Okay. I have a giraffe spine. I have a llama. I have some horses, dogs, all kinds of breed. I have a rat spine. I have all kinds of things in there. Every atlas has handles on them. Except for the giraffes. The giraffe's atlas are just like this. There's no handles on the giraffe atlas. And I was like, Man, why? I wonder why. And the first time I felt one, I adjusted the, low, the lower neck of the draft, but I could not figure out the correct angle on the atlas. And so I didn't touch it. The draft got better. And then I got my first draft spine. It was not the draft that I adjusted, but it was a different draft. <laughs> and so I got to looking at it and it's like, there's really not a way to adjust this atlas. It doesn't really... And so I got to looking at giraffe physiology and the giraffe has all kinds of adaptations in its physiology to maintain appropriate blood pressure in the brain. Giraffes don't lay down. Giraffes stand up. They have like 12 foot from here up eating to down between their legs to drink. And the, their head goes up and down. And they have to be able to maintain that blood pressure. In a good atlas adjustment, like I referred to earlier, when I was having my heart attack and my blood pressure was high and I got my atlas adjusted and my first rib, my blood pressure dropped. And if we drop the blood pressure on a giraffe, they fall over. So we don't adjust the atlas. Now, the rest of the bones of the neck, are good and you can adjust them and everything is interesting good to go so interesting but yeah but um the most unique animal that we ever adjusted was a week old south african porcupine uh how did you get in to adjust that one they're not the quills are like long fur at that time okay now three weeks later we wouldn't have been able to do it, but it's all about timing. <laughs> <laughs> that That is pretty amazing. Um, I couldn't um, imagine trying to adjust a porcupine, a chicken, yeah. a snake. Cattle, PBR bulls, 
and and the big thing is about doing it safely and and if you you have to understand the biomechanics um and so that's one of the things I, people ask me all the time is there any animal you won't adjust and and my answer is an animal that i do not know what the spine looks like well, I broke that rule, unfortunately. So I, I was practicing with, you know, illegally without a license. And I maybe I got lucky because there is some kind of inherent understanding that we have. Right. I remember seeing a chiropractor adjusting Sid Williams. Now, for those mm -hmm. that don't know, Sid Williams is kind of a foundational figure in chiropractic. And he wrote a lot of literature. He got the principle above, down, inside out. He was a very charismatic speaker and performed DE, Di which was what dynamic. Yes, yeah, dynamic. Okay. He was awesome. And I was at a chiropractic conference and Sid Williams was there. And someone asked him, you, you, know, you want an adjustment? How, how, how do you adjust someone at his caliber and, and not be a little bit intimidated at least. So Sid's on the table and turns around and the chiropractor's feeling his spine. And he says to the chiropractor, what are you doing? He said, I'm feeling your spine. He said, what are you feeling for? He said, I'm feeling for hard spots. He said, what are you gonna do if you find one? He said, I'm gonna push on it. <laughs> 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 Which, you know, that is dumbing down chiropractic a little bit, but that's yeah. kind of what it is for the trained chiropractor that hands become so used to feeling and going right to the area that needs the chiropractic adjustment. You know, when you've done this for years and years and years, you can instantly feel and know where the problem is and go right to it. So that's and, and I agree a hundred I agree a hundred percent, but I know that that if I'm off five degrees on the angle, it, it's a different adjustment. Right, right, right. And when we teach our students, they're like, well, how do I know if that's truly the bone that needs to be adjusted? If you're adjusting a joint, you're going to fire joint mechanoreceptor, period, no matter what. You're going to cause endorphin release in the brain. Now, how long that lack of function stays away is dependent on how specific you are with your adjustment. And so we will get response, but when you're more specific, you get amazing responses. Yeah. Like we had a paralyzed dog that I had adjusted before and he got up and walked. I said, come in in a month and they didn't show up. So it's like six or seven months later, it got paralyzed again. We were out of town. It went to see two other chiropractors twice each and they eh, got better, but not wasn't doing very good and it came in and we did our protocol on it we did what we do we looked we said okay we're going to adjust its atlas and they said well everybody else has been adjusting its mid back and i said well that may be what shows up on the x-ray that may be what's sore but we're going to dust this adjusted the atlas put the dog down and it walked first time in in three weeks and because we're very specific about what we do like i sure you are with your people patients and it make you make it look easy, but there's a protocol that you're doing. Absolutely. And you do it. And so when we get out of our scope, like if you ask me to look at you, let's say you were here. I have a I have an adjusting table. We have a drop table in our living room. And if you were here, I'd say, Doc, can you give me an adjustment? Absolutely. You'd say, sure. And I'd lay down on the table and you'd adjust me. And then if I ask you, hey, do you want me to return the favor? Absolutely. You should say, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why do you say no. that? Why? I don't get it. <laughs> Tell me. I don't know the correct angles. I don't know. I don't have a human protocol. Oh, I don't. Okay. I, I don't. I don't do people. Huh. I just have an animal protocol. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on the Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. 
If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.